Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Interesting hearing. Um, you know, I, I, I think we all recognize that there is great value in, in electric vehicles, but um, I hope what you're taking away, Mr. Turk, is, is this recognition that um, you've got an administration that is approaching how we deal with this with one hand deliberately tied behind our back, and we're talking about the critical minerals that go into this. You know, I think the administration is saying the right thing about minerals. We like minerals. We recognize that they're necessary, um, but they're not so not so keen on the on the issue when it comes to domestic domestic mining. And you know, I appreciate what you have shared the exchange there with Senator Padilla about the great benefits. Um, you know, we've identified this source of lithium, but it's about access because we can identify it, but if we don't permit it, if we don't allow for that access, if we don't help support it, and we're helping to support access elsewhere, and that's where I wanna talk a little bit about what we are seeing going on right now. It seems like Department of Defense is really working with us on this, and I, I appreciate that. Um, but it seems like the, the administration has taken this approach that it's anywhere but China, because we all know China, we gotta move away, gotta move away for all the right reasons there. But then, when it comes to a country like Mozambique that doesn't exactly have good labor standards, that doesn't exactly have good environmental standards, then it's all okay. So. I want to I want to talk to you about that. You you have got the background when it comes to critical minerals. You demonstrated that with your work at IEA. It's great. We get that, um, uh, Secretary Adeyemo. I I don't have a question for you this morning. I do that you're going to get um, as a QFR. But I want to just take one brief second to thank you for closing the loophole that uh, was allowing Russia to evade sanctions on on our, uh, our seafoods that uh, is such an important part of our market. So thank you, you're making a difference there. Um, you always have to remember to thank people when they're doing good things. So let's talk about my issue with what is going on with a fixation to get the resource from somewhere else, somewhere else other than here, because we don't really like the fact that when you mine, you have to dig a hole. and. You, you, you look at what we're seeing going on with graphite, and you have mentioned a couple times in your testimony here today that we're gonna see domestic graphite production increase 25-fold here. Projections show 16% of graphite in EVs will be produced in the US. That's great. I'm, I'm curious about what that timeline is on those assumptions, because again, what we're seeing right now doesn't match up. The example that I want to share with the committee is, right now, DOE has awarded more than $320 million to a processing plant in Louisiana. My friend Bill appreciates that. But they're getting their, they're getting their graphite from Mozambique. Um, they, got, they got, DOE is, is now, I don't, I don't know that you've actually done this, but I understand that you're considering another $300 million loan guarantee for that project, which means more graphite from Mozambique. USDFC has announced $150 million in financing to help expand this Balama mine, and it's this mine in a super unstable region in, in Mozambique. Um, unrest is significant. ISIS is active. Workers are paid so little. They went on extended strike last year. There's all kinds of bad news coming out of there. But you've got all that that DOE is supporting for a mine in Mozambique to get the graphite to help Louisiana out here so we can process it here, so we can put that stamp that says made in America, but it's sourced somewhere else. In the meantime, what we've seen to help the largest graphite find in North America, coming out of Alaska, Graphite One, DOD is the only part of this administration that's made an award. We got 37.5 million to help Graphite one move along. So here's my here's my dilemma. We are helping to to support a foreign mine, ultimately benefiting 10 to 20 times more using US taxpayer dollars than we're providing support to our largest known domestic source of graphite. So we know graphite is big, 
We know we've got a source, we've identified it, but we're not helping to facilitate that access. Instead, we're setting up support after support after support for Mozambique. I don't think that's right. I don't think that balance is right. So how can you tell me that the administration is really committed to domestic sourcing when we're not putting our resources there? Well, thanks for the question, Senator. It's always good to see you. And um, l l let me start just with the scale of the challenge, just as you suggest. Right now, China absolutely dominates the graphite uh, processing market, 100%. Uh, I mentioned the numbers earlier, and those are 2027 numbers with the investments we've made so far, and we need to do a lot more, and I'll get to that in a minute. So by 2027, you by really 2027, think that we with the investments we've made uh, so far, 16% of what we need for graphite with passenger vehicles, we'll be able to take care of ourselves in the U.S. Natural but graphite? 16% is not enough. That's the process piece of it with the inputs that right. come from it. Right. But 16% is not enough, right? We should do more than that and completely agree well, with and, you. Well, and you would agree that it's not just about where we process it. It's where completely we get Completely agree. And I was, gonna, I was okay. getting to that. The, the most secure place of any that we can get is here in the United States, right? Assuming you do it with the environmental standards, you do it in the way that works for the communities, the state in which it's located. Uh, I had a chance to uh, get up to Alaska last year and had met and with Graphite that. One yep. leadership. Uh, I had a chance to actually see the actual site in which they're proposing uh, to work. Uh, I came away quite impressed at what they're doing. Uh, I've had conversations with my counterparts over at the Defense Department. They are putting in money. I think mm -hmm. it's about $37.5 million mm -hmm. right now of Defense Production Act that right. was given by Congress to help get that going. Uh, we're particularly excited, and uh, we're trying to connect the dots with our loan program. We've got a second round of funding coming through our battery manufacturing grant program. Can I well. ask on so that? I would absolutely love because for we're told we're told, Mr. Turk, that uh, what we are seeing or what we are hearing is that your mine project, the mine project itself, is not eligible for DOE's loan program. They're only going to consider non-mine infrastructure, not the mine itself. And then they talk about, well, if a pilot project has been completed. So how, how does this help so this is what an operation need. like Graphite One? Exactly. And happy to talk in depth okay. with you and your staff on this and to work through it. Uh, we're trying to be as creative as possible with the tools and the authorities that we've got. Uh, there's one of our loan programs right uh, efforts right now in conditional commitment, $700 million for Rhyolite Ridge in Nevada uh, with a domestic supply of uh, lithium carbonate. Love to work forward. Uh, I've had conversations with the CEO of Graphite One. I know our loan program is having conversations. Again, the loan program takes applications as they come in. So we're more than happy to have conversations and try to figure out which of the tools that we have currently will work uh, to so, develop. So this. if I can just ask one clarification, and I know that uh, we have another colleague here who's waiting, but is it, is, can you, can you confirm to me that, that the, the mine itself, the project itself is actually eligible for DOE loan guarantees or DOE loans? So happy to have a detailed conversation. We're trying to be creative. A lot of times it's the mining and the processing piece. The Rhyolite Ridge is an example of what we're able to do using our authorities. If there's any change in authorities we need, we'd be eager to work with you and the chairman to try to make sure that we have the tools that we can to be maximally helpful. Well, and I uh, think we're gonna need I think that we need to scale. do that because when, when uh, Chairman Manchin and I were working on those Title 17 loan guarantees, we... I think we knew what we wrote in. I think we knew that we explicitly wrote in provisions in this infrastructure law to include mining. And we didn't think that there was any wiggle room with it. And the most so. secure source of these critical minerals is here in the U.S. And we should absolutely responsibly in an environmental way with the community's uh, support and, uh, and to speed up permitting. You mentioned permitting. The chairman's been working on permitting. You both have been working on permitting for years and years, eager to work on that, too, so we can uh, play our part to try to accelerate. Well, we have, we have to do more with this. And what I'm taking away from this exchange is that you can't assure me that, in fact, the mine projects are actually eligible so, for the DOE loan. So if we do have to get creative, even though we think that we were pretty clear in the law itself, uh, allow me to work with you, work with the chairman to get creative to do so because we cannot, you can't pass the red face test 
when, when you're putting 10 to 20 times more US taxpayer dollars into mining projects in a place like Mozambique and telling places like Nevada, Alaska, West Virginia, that you might have the resource, but you're not eligible for that loan. Happy to have further conversations. I've had great conversations with the CEO of Graphite One. Uh, I exchanged an email just earlier this week. Uh, happy to follow up with real urgency here. Good. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Senator